Woo! So, I just finished reading chapter 982 of One Piece titled Ruffian Meets Ruffian. So, not gonna lie guys, this chapter is setting up for the rest of the chapters to be one of the most hype moments in One Piece because this is really showing what the Straw Hats are made of and also just a lot more power scaling that Oda is going to do in the future. But I can't wait, man. This is a hype chapter. So let's just get right into it. So first scene, we see the Onigashima building itself, the uh, half skull from Black Clover, if you would say. So we first cut to Black Maria, Kaido, and Orochi having a blast at the party, the fire festival party. And Orochi is really happy in this scene because in his mind, this is finally the day that all the Kozuki members are all dead, the Nine Red Scabbards and the Samurai Rebellion because of his godly plan and everything. So they're just talking and Kaido actually mentions that he had no idea that one of the traders was actually in the nine red scabbards because he mentions here that he actually might have accidentally killed them a bunch of times but he also mentions that odin really never gave them any clues to laugh tail because if conjuro actually was the traitor and he didn't know anything then odin has a pretty tight lip and he did not tell them anything about his journey with the white bear pirates nor with the roger pirates which is kind of crazy so next scene conjuro the traitor busts through the door, uh, taking out a couple of uh, their guards and soldiers. And Kaido's just like, knock it off. You know, he's one of Orochi's men and everything. And Orochi's just super happy to see Kanjuro. So one thing to note, Kanjuro is huge. Like, I didn't know he was that big. I thought he was around like, you know, like six feet, seven feet, like kind of like Keen's height. But Keen is also pretty tall. So I thought he was kind of like a bit shorter. But in this scene, compared to Momonosuke, he's like a good nine feet. Not gonna lie, my man. Man is huge. But um, so he busts through the door and he's just apologizing to Orochi that he took down one of their own men and stuff because they obviously they didn't know because that was like a top secret plan, Kondro being a traitor and all. And Orochi notices Momonosuke, Kaido as well notices Momonosuke in his hand. And Kaido's kind of disappointed because, well, from his perspective, he stayed the same for like 20 years. But Orochi just sees him and he's like, yeah, that's the heir to the Kozuki clan, the last in his mind because both of them don't know about Hiyori or um, Komurasaki. Um, so they're just thinking, Kaido's just looking at him like, oh, this is a disappointment. Like, what a little boy and everything. So they, she, Momonosuke just gets thrown on the floor and Orochi's just kind of congratulating Kanjuro with the good work and stuff. So Kanjuro goes to then break the bad news to Orochi, which obviously then freaks him the hell out because man has been scared of the Kozuki clan forever. And out of nowhere, Fukurokuju comes out. He's just out here abruptly saying, hey, we basically have nothing to worry about because he hasn't spotted any of the ships that uh, the, the, you know, the pirate rebellion would be carrying or the samurai rebellion, my bad, would be carrying. Uh, however, the three ships that have departed to check has not returned yet so the only thing that they're concerned about right now is luffy zoro kid and killer who are actually on the main floor just wreaking havoc since last chapter and everything but however he says queen is handling it so they have nothing to be worried about and that's also why that fukurokuju actually never told kaido or orochi about it because he thought that they would worry about it too much than he, they should However, in this scene, uh, we cut to Orochi holding the sake uh, cup and he's just trembling. You can see the fear in my guy's eyes and he knows that something is up. So he grabs Momonosuke and he basically just says, well, we're preparing this little boy for execution right away. Prepare the stage for a crucifixion. So Momonosuke is about to be goddamn messed up in a few, but we all know that he's a probably most likely going to survive from, you know, reading all this stuff uh so we cut out from onigashima down to the coast underneath the sea actually where a law submarine is so him his pirates and the nine red scabbards are hanging out uh talking to neko momushi and also marco uh from the last chapter where they actually arrived to wano which is a sick thing i never thought that a uh, marco would actually join makes it so much better for this arc but they're just basically saying and complaining to each other that 
Neko super late. Obviously, we were waiting on him for a long time, and that uh, where they are and everything. So they Neko actually abruptly ends the call, and they're all just talking. And <laughs> um, Kiku actually uh, gives Neko a little comment that he must have grown as big as Inurachi san. So. Law actually talks about the currents around uh, the Onigashima Island itself and he basically explains that a normal ship would have to sail straight through the front of Onigashima due to the uh, different kind of wave patterns and everything surrounding the island. However, they have a submarine so it bypasses all of that stuff. So we cut out from the submarine to Neko's ship and uh, one good thing that I want to say is that they're actually pretty on time, not gonna lie, because I mean, from what the looks of everything, they're just about to arrive on the Onigashima raid and they're just about to pounce on Kaido itself. So, I mean, they kind of arrived at the perfect time. But one interesting thing I wanted to point out is that Marco says, so they're calling it Onigashima now. Interesting. So I'm pretty sure that Marco has some clue or like clues to actually whether or not there was um, important stuff on the island and what was what it was called before and what it was used for. I'm presuming that it would be some kind of poneglyph hideout or maybe uh, something that could decode the poneglyph itself because we all know that poneglyphs actually derived from Wano. So we cut to Nekomomushi and Marco just talking and we realize that actually Nekomomushi and Marco did did not come through at the same time but they actually met each other by accident so you can see here that uh, Marco is actually trying to give Neko a message but it was no use because they just ended up arriving at the same time anyways and we're not sure if the white beard pirates are actually with them we don't see that in the scenes but I'm hoping so that would make it so much lit but uh, we actually cut out from the ship and we head our ways to the southern army's position that's where Kiyoshiro's army is posted at and they're about to bust in this wall when uh, Kiyoshiro actually meets Sasaki. So Sasaki is actually one of the flying six um, beast pirates uh, which is one of the upper echelons of Kaido's army itself and of course they know each other because Kiyoshiro is the mafia boss of Wano at this point. So Sasaki actually gets locked up and just gets crossed up by Kiyoshiro and obviously he's super confused but I mean I doubt he's actually going to stay in that cuff for too long because I think Sasaki's actually going to play a role here in actually being able to fight with someone and I would want to see him actually go head to head with one of the straw hats or maybe one of the heart pirates or the kid pirates or anything that'd be super dope um Sasaki basically asks Kiyoshiro, hey, what are you doing? What's the big idea? And Kiyoshiro just pulls down his uh, pulls down his kimono, showing his back with the Kozuki symbol. He's like, do you know the history of Wano Sasaki? He's like, what, bro? Double crossed. Well, we skip right back uh, from Kiyoshiro's army back to the Straw Hats, where from last chapter, Chopper actually goes face to face with Big Mom, or rather Olin. So he actually sees her pop out of the window and he's like in shock. So in this scene, uh, he apparently just shoots the cannon from his tank that Frankie gave him straight to Big Mom. So she obviously she's not going to feel a thing. She's a goddamn emperor of the sea. So she's just running after uh, Usopp and Chopper at this scene. And the one crazy thing is, even though they were abruptly trying to uh, get Big Mom to notice them and run run the other way that was actually really smart of them because now the actual samurais can head without having to deal with big mom itself so i mean the samurai has a lot to owe for chopper and usopp i'm not sure how it's gonna pan out i mean she's an emperor of the sea but i feel like this is more of just like oda's gag comics kind of coming back in and i'm pretty sure they're gonna be fine so nami uh nami chopper no sorry nami carrot and nami carrot and shinobu actually runs into Zeus so we all know that Nami actually has um the actual uh, the cloud from Big Mom that is still inside her climb attack uh Prometheus sorry and now Prometheus is gonna be going after them so we we don't we're not really sure what's gonna happen with uh Prometheus and uh Nami because I'm pretty sure that 
while Zeus was trying to get something, I'm pretty sure Prometheus is more of the one that has the anger side of Big Mom, and obviously it's gonna be a hard battle to get out of, but I mean, Nami Carrot and Shinobi should be fine, because I mean, it's kind of playing the same gag technique that Oda wanted to play with. So, we cut out from them, we know that now the Straw Hats have to deal with both Big Mom and her homies. Uh, we cut out to Kaido's Keep, and we get introduced to Ulti and Page One again, who are obviously trying to look for Yamato, uh, Kaido's son. So, Ulti in this scene is kind of, I mean, we kind of realize that she's kind of like quirky and like sassy and everything, but in this chapter, she kind of acts like that, like, you know, little sister to a page one. She's like, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to run anymore. And <laughs> page one's just like, I don't give a damn. Then just stop if you're tired. And then she just fights back, like, give me a damn piggy ride. And she's like, get off of me. So, the chapter kind of ends there, but there's kind of a little bit more scenes in this chapter, which I really appreciate Oda of doing. So she kind of brings page one down to the floor, kind of like in a funny way. They fall down the staircase and they run into Luffy, your boy, Luffy. So um, they kind of have like a stare down and Luffy kind of sees Ulti, Ulti kind of sees Luffy and they're all both like staring down each other and the chapter kind of ends off with uh, Ulti basically saying what the hell do you want and Luffy's just saying I was gonna ask you the same thing boom we about to get a two on one Ulti and page one versus fifth Yonko Luffy that's gonna be hype well we're gonna have to wait for the next chapter but basically this chapter is kind of setting up all the fights and everything just laying out the roots like all the past chapters however we get to see more of the lineups of who's actually gonna fight who and i'm hella excited to see what happens next uh chapter but this is gonna do it for this uh chapter review hope you guys enjoyed it and peace out